open. I think I've been having problem with my directory, but I think it has been fixed now. So you click on data and um, from desktop, you have to change this to Excel, don't forget. So you should get this sample data, this has been added. So now we need to open, so an opening. This on the first sheet, it is on the first sheet of the data. So I'm just one sheet. And don't forget that you need to mark this, which is states that you should read variable names from the first row of the data. To read variable names from the first row of the data, it means the head, first row of the data will be the heading of each variable, and which is true. Because if you notice, age is the first of that data, location is the first of that data, and so on. So let's click. You can see that age is the first. It sees, so it SPSS now identifies it as the first, as the heading. However, it has been pasted for the meantime, but we need to tell SPSS what each of these data represents before we analyze. We cannot just go into analysis without telling SPSS what each of these data represents. So don't forget that our age is in numbers. So we are going to leave it in numeric. Then location is in location is in is in is we say we say is in, we are going to leave it in um in we are going to leave it in string. You can see it is in string. So we leave it. I think it's not in string. We are going to click on this and you not choose from all this, whether it is a dot, scientific notation, dates, dollar, custom, or anything. So we're going to click on string. So we are going to do it in that form. Gender, it says is in numeric. However, the numbers meant something. And what does the number mean? So we're now going to go to values for us to tell SPSS that each number, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's what it means. Now, let us state it. Don't forget that one meant Value one means that it's female, and two represents male. So we add, click on add here. And if we have more, we keep on adding, 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 but we don't, it's just male and female because it is a uh, categorical variable that is in a nominal um, scale. Nominal simply means that you don't have a, an order. So male and female, male is not higher than female, likewise the other way around. So we are done, so it's okay. And if you observe, because male does not have an order, so we are going to leave this one as nominal. The string as well, all the location does not have an order. But for this, because it is age and it is a scale of measurements, of age of, 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 of number of years so uh, is, is, i want to leave it as scale if it is not there you need to change it to scale now you go down course of study if somebody should change this course of study to scale is totally wrong which will not even be there but because um course of study is not also in a hierarchy none of them is in the hierarchy so we leave it as nominal total score our total score is in our total score is in um, is in numbers. So we leave it. We leave it like that. And course of this. Should, let me let me widen this. Let me widen this. Okay, this is course of study. I don't know why course of course of study is coming up twice. Okay, I think. Okay, it's it matched the Excel we're using match the two um, data. So you should just disregard this. It's match the two data. Let's disregard it. That's all. Basically, that's all. Now, if you want to add anything, all you just need to do is to come here. You don't add here on this data view, you add any heading here. So if, for example, I want to add percentage, I 
if I want to add the percentage, percentage is in is in numeric. So I'll choose numeric. We leave the rest. Don't forget that in this column, you don't put space, you don't put numbers, or you just need to do is leave it like that together, or you separate your words with underscore. So I want to do it like that percentage, then you can state that it is a you can now put anything you want in the label percentage. However, you can also, since it's numeric, so we leave it like that. We are not yet, we are not meant to um, code it. Any number is not representing anything but itself, so we don't need to code it. I repeat, any number or any percent is not representing anything but itself, so we need to leave it. I did mean each percent is going to be representing something, so we're going to add it, but if not, we leave it. And it's going to be a scale. It is going to be a scale, because it is a continuous variable. Now, and don't forget that we say a continuous variable is any variable that is countable, that is measurable. Percent is measurable. You can have 5%, you have 10.5%, you can have any amount of percent you want, so it is measurable. So. Then we now go back to the data view to now input it. Now, 5% of 9, you input. 10% of 9, you input. Now, for you to not waste your time here, the best way to do it very easily is to go back to your Excel. Now, we can now open our Excel. We can now open our Excel. Let's open our Excel file, sample data analysis. I guess this is where the margin happened with the old one we've done, so I don't know why. But I don't think this course of study is supposed to be there. Now, what is supposed to be here is percent. Let's say we want to add percent, for example. So we have a total of 10. I'm just doing this just in case. Uh, I can just do it off at, but I'm just doing it in case you have a very huge numbers. So if I want to calculate the percent of this score for this person from Cross River now, what I will do is that I'm just going to say equals to, remember in Excel, you start your function with equals to. So I'll just state that equals to five divided by the total number of possible marks, which is 10, multiplied by 100. So it's going to be asterisk 100. And click enter. And click enter. You can see it is 50. This person is called 50%. Now, don't forget, we can just apply it to everything instead of typing it one by one by putting our cursor in the bottom to so give the plus sign, then hold and drag. Excuse me. Because the I don't know what's wrong. So, to get the total score, all we need to do is just don't forget our equals to, as I've said, equals to, then click on this, divided by, divided by, um, 10, the total number of score, then multiply by 100 to make a percent, sorry, multiplied by 100. Hit enter. Okay, that's because I didn't close the brackets. That's because I didn't close the brackets. You can see. I see. Let's let me do it again. It's going to be equals to this five divided by ten multiplied by one hundred. We give fifty. So I'll just need to drag it as I've said down to give the respective percent. 
So I can now just copy this into SPSS percentage here and paste it. Now, let us add one more thing. Let's add one more thing. Just for the purpose of learning. So, I want to add um, grid. So, grid is not going to, is going to be coded. Since I will now code it, you know, it's now, since it will be coded, it means SPSS will be a certain number. If it is going to be string, it means FCS, SPSS will be accepting words. But it is going to be coded, so it means it's going to be accepting numbers. So here again, I'll now I'll write grid. I'm just labeling it. Now, it's now, I now want to code it. I'm doing this just in case you are not downloading from Excel or you are not downloading from, um, from the E questionnaire, which is the Google form in this case. So we are going to represent one with excellent one, and we are going to represent two with maybe good, and we are going to represent three. With the person is fair. So we are grading it. So I think it's okay. Now, this is an ordinal scale because it is in order of degree. Excellence is better than good, and good is better than being fair. So that is how it is, just for the case of learning. Now we now come down here, and you know state that yeah so anywhere you see let me say 50 is maybe let me say it is good so don't forget that my good is number two so i'll also type two sorry excuse me you need to change this you need to click on this anytime it's bringing something like this for you you need to click on this to make your course work faster this icon is ai so it's a1 so you need to click on it so everything that is supposed to be number will be placed with number so um, if 50 maybe let me just say the person is good good sorry uh, i tried typing g it's complaint so now i'm going to type two good 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 this person is fair so i'm going to give you three this person is excellent, I'm going to give you one, and this person is also fair, so I'll give the person three. So if I click this A1 again, it's going to turn it back to alphabet. It means SPSS has recognized the two as being good, the fair, that's three as being fair, and one for excellent. So basically, these are, um, these are to uh, import data from all the way from SPSS, all the way from Excel into SPSS correctly. And this is one of the easiest way to do it. And we are using our real, real, real life data collected during the course of this study. So the next thing we are going to be talking about is um, data cleaning and treatment proper. And we are going to be talking about three things, basically. The first one is identifying and transforming of outliers using the go-to case function. And we are going to be identifying missing data using frequency function. We are also going to be transforming data using replace missing function on SPSS. Now, basically, we are going to start with identifying and transforming outliers. Now, what are outliers? Outliers simply means um, 
it is really applicated, applica is applicable to continuous data in which the data is, is, is very, very far, the distribution of data is very, very far out of the mean. And in most cases, when we have an outlier, it usually affects our results, especially it affects the type of analysis to use. It affects our conclusion. And if possible, it is good we correct it because most of some of sometimes it is being caused by either human error, typo error, or in some cases it is really the data. So for in the case where it happens, what do we do? And that's what we're going to be doing today. Now we are on SPSS profile, we are out of Excel. We are done with Excel and we are now in XS, SPSS profile. So let's go back to our SPSS. Now, what do we do if we have an outline? Now, it, as I said, is applicable to, um, it's applicable to continuous data. It's applicable to continuous data. Now, we're looking at this data. I will say there's an outlier. I want to predict an outlier anyway. I'm predicting that there's an outlier from experience. And I'm very sure for some of us who know, we know that there's an outlier, but let's, let's see if I'm correct or not. Now, how do we identify outliers? That's the first thing. Sometimes, because our data is just nine in number, sometimes we have series of data, hundreds of data. You may not use your eye to identify outlier like that, so you need to do some things. And that's, those are the things that are listed in the slide here, where it says that we identify through a function called go to case function. But the first thing you do when you get your data is to look for outliers. And looking for outliers is very easy. All you need to do is to check the distribution of that data using some methods. The first thing you do is to check using a graph. Now, we are going to use it using a graph known as the, uh, the box plot graph. Use it. So we click on graph, KGC dialog, then we can go to box plots. I can just go with the simple one. And, um, uh, we can just click. Let me give you a very simple one, better and simple one. So I've used this because graph, chart builder, I repeat again, the simple one. Because I noticed that there's some things I have to have talked about using that one, but to really confuse at this stage. But as we proceed to the third level, you understand what I'm saying. So let's talk about the chart builder. Then we are going to use box plots. So this is it. So we click on it. Then we now drag this one, this single one, because we want to check for just one variable. I want to check for outlier on age. So we are not using this multiple one. We are just taking this single one here. So I'm dragging it down to this place. It's loaded. Now it has uploaded it. That is now left for me to now bring this data here. So I'll click here and drag it down here. Yeah, I'll now click on OK. Now, if you notice, I said there's an outlier. It, this box plot simply means, this first line simply means the maximum value. This is the maximum value. This is the lowest value. The lowest age here is around 19 from this graph, if you notice. Now, if we are to go and check our graph, if we are to check our graph, if we are to check our data by going back, anyway, this is an output view. This is where the result of any analysis we make. So we have two view on uh, the, the, the on SPSS, on IBM SPSS. 
This is the output view. Then we have this, the sheet, the spreadsheet view, and this is the spreadsheet view. So if we are to go back to the spreadsheet view, you will see that 19 is the smallest. You will tell me that 54 is the highest. However, 54 is very, very far from the mean of all the rest of them. So it will name it an outlier. And that is the reason why when we go back to our data here, you will notice, when we go back to our data here, When we go back to our data, you notice this nine, start nine. Now, the highest value here is supposed to be 52, but we have something closer to 40, around 39. It is saying that this 39 is the highest and the lowest is 19. The middle or the median age here is around 28 or 29. That is the meaning of this. Um, this kind of chart. So I know many of you must have been seeing something like this. I've been wondering that. What does this mean? That's basically what it means. Maximum value at the top, minimum value of the distribution. This is the median, the middle value of the distribution. This is the um, first twenty-five percent of the value is here. Seventy-five percent of the value is here, and this on it. So basically, it's telling us that this nine is an outlier it is outside the range of all this so what do we do we need to trace this number nine we need to trace this number nine on our data and we are now going to go back to our data we will go back to our data and trace that number nine now on our data the number nine is 54 as i've said earlier. i told you there's going to be an outlier. now we've identified outlier We've identified outlier. So going back to our, our going back to our slide. Going back to our slide. Going back to our slide. We are going to. Okay, this is our slide. Identify and transforming outliers. So now we've identified, but we now want to transform them, if possible, if possible. It's not all outliers to transform. There are some outliers where you leave it as they are. There are some outliers where you have to just leave it the way they are. And because of some certain condition, and I will tell you the, the, the conditions where you leave the outlier the way they are. Now, this outlier 54 should be left. I'll tell you why. Because it's a normal distribution. It is a normal distribution. It is not true typographical error. If you go back and cross check and you now find out that this person is really 54 years old, will you change it? In your research, you don't need to change it. You leave it like that. You have to leave it like that. But in a case where it is maybe typographical error, or maybe it is a, um, uh, maybe in a way, in a case where you use a technique, for example, maybe glucose, blood glucose estimation, and you don't see a very high value, you might be like, I'm very sure, if you are sure, because you are the one that carried out the research, if you are sure that this person cannot be like this, I don't have this value in my results. So I don't know how come this result got there. So what you do is that you, 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 you delete this 54 and give it the nearest, highest value, the maximum value on our box plots. The maximum value on our box plot. And the maximum value is 39, 38. The maximum value is 37, yes. So you now clean this or you delete this and put 37. That's how you do in, in data analysis. But in a case like this, I'm very sure that person is 54 years old. So we have to do it like that. We just have to do it like that. Now, in a case where you have a very large numbers, 
and you really want to remove this data you really want to remove this data as our slide indicates that uh, you use a function using the version go, uh, um, the go to case function and you can't even identify it for example immediately after you identify it here maybe this number nine is number one thousand and something you cannot go and be scrolling down to number one thousand it's going to be time for you so what you do is that you use this function in the edits so you, you go to you go to the edits then you go to case here is written five but you have to write nine and you click on go you can see it brings it up that this is the case that is having problem this is the case that is the outlier so it's now left for you to do what you want to do based on your own conclusion and i've stated the conclusion the first conclusion is either to remove it if you are sure that something went on that this person is not 54 years old something went maybe when you are typing or for example if you are doing a study among children and you now see 54 years old definitely you have to remove it you have to remove it you have to remove it and change it to a data because you don't know what to put there because it may be a type of error or anything. So what you do in statistics is no manipulation of results. It is transforming of results and is ethical. Which all you just need to do is to just put the maximum level on the box plot, which is 37. So you just change this to 37. But in this case, we are going to leave it like that. So still on data treatments, still on data treatments, the next one again is to identify missing um, functions. We have missing, missing data using the frequency function. Sometimes you may um, want to identify some functions here or some, some data here. Some data may be missing it's because we, we, we or in, in most cases, your data may not be missing if you follow all the processes we have been following since morning. But if your data is missing, what do you do? What do you do? Sometimes it may be typographic error where you have to cross check. So even though you are here, you need to watch the cross check. So in a process where uh, you have um, missing values and you have maybe thousands of data that you, you just can't be scrolling one by one to check. So all you need to do is just to run the frequency of, of each parameters. For example, gender. So if you want to run frequency, this is how to run frequency. You go to analyze, descriptive, click on descriptive, then you go to frequency, you click on frequency. Then you add any of the parameters you want to run to frequency. So let's click on H, click on OK. Now, if you notice in this box, it states that missing is zero. That means there's no missing value. But when you see any number here, it means what there's a missing value. So you now check it here in this box. Which one is missing? You can see it's even giving the amount of um, value. But basically, in this our in this our data, we don't have any missing value. So that's really, that's the case here. So The next one is transforming missing data using, maybe I've identified that there's a missing data. Now, using, after that, after identifying that there's a missing data, what do you do? You just leave it like that. Oh, because you know, there's going to be thousands of data, of, of data, sorry, of data. Now, do you just um, start looking for it one by one? When it says that there's 10 missing data, how do you navigate it? To make it fast, uh, to automate it, this is what we do. We use a function in SPSS known as the transform and replace missing data. So the first thing you do is uh, let's go back to our spreadsheet. So we click on the transform, then you now click on the replace missing values. You click on it. Now You've identified that it is in age, and we have some missing value in age. 
for example, sorry, sorry, not age, we use gender. In the gender, let's say, for example, we have some missing value in gender. Let me even make it blue. Let me remove some male. I'll remove some male. I'll remove some male. We all know that they are all male. So, transform. Okay, the first thing we do is to run the frequency. Let's run the frequency and see if how many are missing. You can see that there are two missing. So let's go. Analyze, compare me, um, descriptive, descriptive frequency. Then we run the frequency of gender. You can see we have two missing. It's stated. It's stated though. We have two missing. We have two missing. It's Look at it here again. You see, we have four female, three male, the total of seven. Then those that are missing are just two. So now what do we do? The next thing we do is to go back to our data, our, our spreadsheet. Then we go to the transform. We place missing value. There are several methods you can use the series mean. I use the mean of everything. In some cases, it depends. You know, you don't know. So you use the mean of everything. And don't forget that this is not reading, SPSS is not reading all these one as um, numbers, as letters, as this alphabet, of the, uh, these words. It's reading it as one and two. Don't forget. So what it does is that to now find the mean of one or two. To find the mean of one and two. So if we are seeing true series by series mean or mean of nearby points or that of the median or any one you, you choose based on what you have concluded on, because it is missing, so you just have to fill it with something that is meaningful statistically. So if we are to use the mean, it's going to fill it with. Let's see what it will fill it with. So I basically, let's use the age first. Let's use the age in this case. This is men. This is basically it's really applicable to. It is applicable to male. You know, it's applicable to continuous variable in most cases. It's really not. We really, really don't use it for um, the this uh, the autonomous variable, but because uh, we it is empty. Most of the, the if, if it is empty, then you have, don't have choice that to go back and look for your data. But in cases where you, you just don't have it and it's a continuous variable, that's when you apply this. So the first thing you do is um, data. Okay. Edit. So we go to transform, we place missing values. If we have some for age. So I you now click see this mean. It means it's going to find the mean of everything here. And it will use it. But because there's zero, there's really nothing much. There's really nothing much. And 
But this one, it may not reflect, it may not reflect these missing values here. It may not reflect on the analysis. Like it may not reflect right now, like replacing them on the distance. But when you are carrying out your analysis using age or using gender, it will just replace them to be the mean of the distribution of one and two. Mean and distribution of one and two, it will use it to fill up those empty space, empty, empty column, and it will now use it to calculate your analysis. So basically, this is for the autonomous variable, and this is for um, continuous variable. In most cases, they usually use it for continuous variable. Now, we have really come to the end of the first session of. Um, data analysis master class of Pepsi Stats, and I hope you had a wonderful session. And feel free to make give us any feedback, comments, addition, and um, any positive um, addendum as well. Thank you very much for listening.